Story 12. I'm from Sacramento, California. Sacramento is the capital of California. And that's not too interesting. If you are, say, between the ages of 18 and 35, it's not a great place to live. There are lots of trees. Granted, I'll give you that. But uh, there, um, so there's a lot of retired people. There's a lot of uh, families raising children. There are two military bases, one of which has closed, I think, recently, but uh, I haven't been back to Sacramento in a very long time, so I'm not quite sure about that. My father works at one of the military bases. He is a meat cutter, which is distinct from a butcher. So a butcher is the person who cuts the meat up. So when you take the skin off and then the butcher cuts the, cuts the animal up. The meat cutter then takes those larger pieces cuts them into small pieces for the consumer. At any rate, I grew up in Sacramento, uh, went to school there, K through 12, uh, which means I went through my, there are three schools in the California system, in the Sacramento system, and there is the kindergarten through sixth grade, seven and eight being the middle school, and nine through 12 being the high school. Uh, unlike European, some of the European systems, uh, American schools, generally, everyone goes to the same high school, which means that there's no tracking system outside of the school. There's a tracking system within the school, but not outside the school. Uh, and as for the middle school, the 7 and 8, I think that they put all of the puberty-stricken uh, students together, and I don't think it's a very good idea. I had a miserable time there. People picked on me all the time, but you get over these sort of things. You develop and you grow. After high school, I applied for the University of California, Berkeley, which I was accepted, to which I was accepted. My, uh, my friends were very surprised that I got accepted. I, I knew absolutely nothing about university at all, about, about college. And uh, I thought I couldn't make the distinction between Bakersfield and, and Berkeley, <laughs> which uh, drew a few laughs from some of the people who knew the distinction, Bakersfield being... Uh, a city at the bottom of the the great imperial valley of california it's a dump basically Ber berkeley being the center of intellectual learning um so i didn't really know what i was getting into i have to admit that while i was um, still in high school i had the idea that uh, i would be an engineer because my friends were being were applying to be engineers so i didn't know anything about engineers as i said my parent oh uh, my mother my father's a butcher, but my mother's um, a maid in a in a uh, department store. So I knew nothing about college. No one in my family had gone to college. Nobody uh, told me anything about college. A few things they did tell me, uh, I didn't really believe them because I had seen Animal House, the movie, and uh, I had a good idea what college was like. You just drank a lot of beer and hung out in a fraternity. And uh, boy, was I wrong there. Um, at any rate, I applied. I was accepted, and in January of my final high school year, I started to get the idea, I'm going to college, I'm going to college. I was really excited about it, and uh, knew nothing about it. I had only made one application. I subsequently found out that most people, when they apply to college, they apply to about five, and they use one as their main one, and then a bunch of backups, etc. But for me, I thought I would get in, and I was very lucky to do so. I started there in the fall, which means late August of 1985. I finished in the, oh, you could say the beginning of the spring semester, but basically in January of 1989. Uh, I took a semester off in that period of time, which at which point I worked as a bike messenger in San Francisco. Great job, by the way. Best job I've ever had. There's no boss, really. So you can... Um, ride around they call you on the micro on the uh, walkie talkie todd where are you well i'm i'm in uh, jackson square and i wasn't actually in jackson square i was just in the most convenient place that the dispatcher wanted me to be so i uh, would tell i would tell them whatever i wanted whatever they wanted to hear because it was easy to get around the city so it was no problem i came to europe in october of 1990 and since that time i have not been in the united states um i miss it 
in a little way. I, I used to miss it much more, but now, you know, you forget some of the things. And the things that I don't forget, I ask my friends to bring me. And usually it's food. So today I, f I finished off a bag of Doritos, which is a type of, of potato chip to American or a, a crisp. I think British people called it crisp. Um, but it's it's like a talk it's a it's a corn tortilla with this special mexican type cheese flavor stuff and uh, <laughs> you can't miss it i've said to my, some of my friends i'd like a way to get a slurpee here which is a drink that's special to 711 um it's a frozen ice drink but it's made in a special machine it's very hard to describe but you can't get them in europe um i have since lived i spent a year in a, uh, where I, so i spent Ten months in Portugal working in a bar. I spent three and a half months in, or practically four, yeah, no, three and a half months in uh, Spain, ten days in Madrid, and three and a half months in um, Barcelona. In Barcelona, I worked on a construction site just before the Olympics. If you ever see a picture of Barcelona, you will see down at the river, uh, down at the water, there are two very tall skyscrapers. One of them has an external frame, which is X's, big white X's, and I worked on that building, and um, that was interesting. I made a lot of money. I made $160 a day. I worked six days a week. I also washed dishes at night, so my days consisted of working from getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning, being at work at 7, working until 6 in the evening, coming home, taking a shower, taking a half-hour nap, then going to the restaurant at 8.30, eating my dinner, 9 o'clock, start washing dishes until 1, then go to a bar and drink two or three beers until about 2.30, get in bed at 3, and get back up at 6. I did this for six weeks, and you can imagine how tired I was. After the end of the six weeks, I, I was finished with that. We met, um, well, we, some, one of my friends had the idea to come to Eastern Europe because we had some money, we could open a bar, and uh, by chance we, we talked about it over the, those beers that I had at the end of the night, we um, talked about this bar thing, but it was never a serious thing until one night we met a Hungarian woman, and she said her friend had a bar and he would help us, and um, we actually drew straws to see who would come in advance and meet this woman and see if uh, we could open this bar. That was me. And that was in uh, January of 1992. The bar never opened, and um, I have been in Hungary ever since.